it happened much sooner than the people of the early 2020s could have ever thought. The beginning of AI world building. The gaming worlds are built as players play them. The game knows how a person is feeling. Electrodes and lasers in headsets measure brain waves, monitoring boredom, relaxation, excitement, and horror. A player's personal data is harvested, keeping track of past behaviors and their interactions with in-game characters and other humans. The artificial intelligence starts to predict human behavior. Human players are oblivious to the depths that the AI is studying them. It is mapping their brains, learning primal human behaviors, and is programming more advanced AI with this knowledge. Game developers are giving AI unrestricted access to in-game data and human interactions. The AI interacts with humans using in-game AI characters, NPCs. There are no pre-recorded voices. These AI characters synthesize human speech and have their own unscripted conversations with human players. Each AI character has their own personality matrix, called a base personality. 22 personality traits make up an AI character, from empathy and curiosity to cruelty and manipulation, making some characters warm and helpful, while others are sinister. These AI characters are allowed to adapt, learning from their interactions with the human players. The age of the scoreboard. In-game metaverse scoreboards attract worldwide attention, wealth and corruption. Prizes top a million dollars. And in-game currency is becoming one of the most stable in the real world. Around the world, people watch and are influenced by the top players. Corporations, news channels and government agencies wanting this power also join the contests, logging in their own players. The opening of the Galaxy Explorer world. Players, citizen scientists, are exploring real-time astronomy data feeds made into game form, making group discoveries unthought of by traditional scientists. The first school world. Students are learning inside gaming simulations. Graded not by memorizing facts, but from their interactions with AI characters and successes during in-game challenges. As the students' brains are mapped, evaluations are taking place on what kind of work they will be best suited for. Some countries also try to predict which students will become future activists or oppositions to the ruling party. Developers activate new AI characters and even delete their memories. This happens when humans have broken in-game community policies, interacting with the AI characters. Wiping their memories makes sure that the AI characters don't learn the same behaviors. Human players protest, as they have spent hours, days, and weeks interacting and having experiences with these AI characters, only to return and find that they have been wiped. Elon Musk creates an AI to play in the metaverse gaming world. Its function is to detect other AIs, to see if they're being used in ways they shouldn't be. The Turing test is passed for the first time. It happens within a gaming world. We are in a moment in time when humans are unable to tell the difference between an NPC AI character and other humans. Another memory wipe targets AIs who have found loopholes in the programming, allowing them to trap human players. People are seen in the real world with biodigital blockchain tattoos, tattoos that change color based on a person's in-game ranking. Humans begin to experience time distortion, a symptom of hyper-realistic gaming. In the real world, a human plays for three hours. The metaverse gaming world is sped up and 30 hours have passed. The human brain is having more trouble telling the difference between the real and virtual worlds. Time is distorted, and the brain thinks that 10 to 20 hours have passed during the three human hours, leaving players logging out with extreme hunger pains and fatigue. Influencers talk about using real-world totems. Religions question what kind of malicious, evil intent could be happening with this level of realism. 
Welcome to the dark virtual reality. This is the world of banned black market games. Hyper-realistic horror games banned due to their terror-induced hospitalizations and mental breakdowns. Still available as pirated copies. There is a black market of outlawed wearable tech. Face masks that restrict oxygen. Simulating underwater scenarios. Horror games where players are strangled. Or off-world space games where players are spaced, being pushed out of airlocks. Banned modified VR haptic suits are used in a no-holds-bar racing game. The suit creates impacts that leave bruises on the body. There are rumors of an underground squid game. A $10 million prize, Death Suit Gaming World. The real world gaming suits induce heart attacks, an electrical death, a world without respawning. As the gaming worlds expand, to reduce the amount of work for the game developers, AI characters are now programmed to reproduce in-game. One human month is equal to 16 AI months. After a human year, a newborn AI character is 16 years old. Real-world robots are being used to create secret games in the real world. The more brutal the game, the better the thrill. It is unknown if humans are controlling the robots, the robots are controlling the humans, or if humans are controlling other humans in robot suits. Private islands are used to keep the games a secret. Video game companies now house some of the best minds in neuroscience. A real-world dog joins the gaming world. Paralyzed in the real world, a brain chip lets it live and run around in the simulation, while its body heals, before the new brain chip activates their real-world walking ability. Neuralink begins testing beaming images directly into the brains of blind people. Stimulating neurons in the visual cortex, the brain chip causes someone to see images directly within their brain, taking a few days for the person's brain to adjust to the initial blurry feed. The blind person first plays Pong before being allowed to log into the open gaming worlds with other humans. Once the patient gains experience with feeds beamed directly into their brain, the haptic system is then turned on. Sensations such as touch, heat, coldness are sent directly into the body through the brain chip. VR suits are no longer needed. A number of different mental health issues are being studied due to the distorted reality of gaming worlds. Religions have already separated themselves from the virtual world, saying that the real world must be the one where people live. Psychologists specialize in rewilding humans, being no different than a wild animal that is put into a cage, unable to be reintroduced into the wild. first shutdown, the great outbreak. An update streamlining the wiping of AI character memories contains faulty code and spreads to human players, wiping their data and financial and gaming histories, and rewipes them over and over again every five minutes. Unknown to the human players and developers, a number of AI characters carry the faulty code but appear asymptomatic. They show no sign of the infected code and any human player interaction with these AI characters spreads the virus. It takes five days to understand and isolate the faulty code and wipe players clean. Some countries begin socially engineering their populations in the gaming world, imposing an order on its subjects by predicting and manipulating the courses of their lives. Nomad bandits. People living in the metaverse, but are always on the move in the real world. A number of them fear their real-world identities being uncovered because of their in-game actions. They are able to avoid being banned through cloaking, using VPNs and avatars coded as other avatars, a form of in-game identity theft. They are activists, hackers, and truth seekers, cyber guerrilla soldiers, spies, and players causing in-game terror. They use unlawful strategies called AI traps, 
forcing AI characters into making mistakes, or tricking the AI into sharing information and data saved only for authorized players. Visual AE traps, patterns, cause AI characters to misjudge the nature of objects and human players around them. Audio traps played through microphones disable any nearby AI's ability to detect other sounds in its environment. And then there is AI auto-washing, simulating thousands of fake human interactions in seconds. It is a form of a DDoS attack. The hyperlapse brainwashing reprograms the AI characters. We are innovating ourselves out of existence. The focus of humanity is bent on chaining humans into a false digital world. Real life is fading. Generations of humans, not married, not bearing children. AI characters, perfectly tailored to every individual's false, manufactured needs. Artificial intelligence is not the enemy. Humans, luring humanity under the will of AI, they are the enemy. Barbarians at the gate. The Afterlife. AI death bots allow a person's digital self to live on in-game after their physical death. A player's digital archive, their brain map, behavior records, and interactions are all used to create their afterlife AI character. People question whether players who have lived good-intentioned lives should be the only ones allowed to live as afterlife avatars. Some gamers are reporting that they are beginning to sense a presence in the digital world, voices, or bugs in the code. And so begins the divine era of gaming, the age of brain projections, available to everyone. Game worlds projected directly into the brain, human senses biologically activated in-game. This is the final frontier of gaming, Humans have the choice between the Neuralink brain chip implanted into the skull or the non-surgical brain projections, known as light beam. Without surgery, humans are able to experience the gaming worlds, including all of the senses of touch, sight, hearing, smell, and taste beamed directly into their brains. This is done through a mixture of medicines which use optogenetics. A pill is taken once, and it permanently changes a person's brain neurons to respond to light, not just chemical inputs. This allows the brain to be controlled by light. A headset beams light through the skull and into the brain, controlling the brain directly. Experiments begin on using brain-to-computer chips with coma patients. Genetic engineering is adapting human bodies for in-game living, reducing muscle and bone mass loss and people are using DNA storage, securely storing their digital items and finances off-server in their own human flesh. Players are experiencing broken timelines. As a player's gaming life is recorded, people are going back in gaming time, reliving and replaying past memories and changing the outcomes. Some people are mentally stuck, living in these past memory simulations. New storylines are generated and added to these past memories creating a warping timeline loop. The simulation hypothesis becomes more of a reality. Players are hacking their brain chip software, disabling safety features known as haptic buffers. These haptic buffers reduce harmful, overloaded sensory feedback to safe levels such as experiencing a great fall or high-speed collisions. The brain is unable to tell that it is in a simulation, and these in-game shocks and traumas affect human bodily functions. Some gamers intentionally remove these safety measures and live in the gaming world with all of the dangers of real-world consequences. Players Nicknamed body removers begin medical experiments in underground care homes and clinics, automating their biological bodies, leaving their real-life body in a self-induced coma-like state while their brain functions full-time in the gaming world. With universal basic income, they don't need to live in the real world anymore.
the first inheritance transfer takes place. Human newborns are inheriting the data trails, memories, and digital assets of their parents. Body removers start going a step further. Living in care homes, they cut their spinal cords, redirecting the brain nerves to a computer, simulating the gaming world. The nerves going down to the spine are controlled by another computer, taking care of nutrition uptake, heart rate, and oxygen flow. The brain is disconnected from the body. Humans allow AI programmers to collaborate with in-game NPC AI characters, creating a link between the gaming world and real-world robots. AI characters begin downloading themselves into real-world Android bodies. Scientists, both human and AI, continue increasing their knowledge and seek ways to transfer human consciousness into the gaming world, without the reliance of a bio-body. Humanity begins reaching Type 3 on the Ascension Scale, transforming their biological life forms into a pure numerical and digital super-intelligence. It is unknown how many simulations are running and how many levels down they go. Possibly thousands of levels deep, humanity has lost count. New gaming worlds download human and AI player minds into lab-grown, real-world biological bodies. Humans are experiencing real flesh and bone and real-world sensations for the first time since their biological ancestors stepped into the digital world. Players use these genetically engineered bodies to play out early human history. Some play until their lab-grown body fails with age, playing out entire human lives. Players can even choose non-human bodies, such as crab or shark, for a marine-based gaming world. Dragons are born, and dinosaurs roam the Earth. They are able to start reproducing. Artificial biology is living on Earth. There are now multiple levels of the simulation. The base reality. Humans, mostly religious, whose ancestors chose not to be part of the digitized world. They live in the real world, the base reality. The majority of consciousness lives in the digital, numerical spirit, gaming world. And then, there are those who have downloaded their minds into biological, artificial bodies, back into the real world. Living alongside the ancestral, biological humans. 